there are riots in Paris. Riots? But Paris is the most beautiful city in the world. Why should my people feel anything but pride and contentment? But they are also starving. The next time there are rioters, shoot them. Wait! Before we get into this awesome theatrical play-like film, please do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button right down there at the bottom, right? It really will help us out. It's 1998, man. It stars uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, John Malkovich, uh, I, I, Jeremy Irons, Peter Skarsgård. <laughs> yeah, he's in here too. Uh, what's this guy, the guy from House? What's his name? Um... Oh! <laughs> yeah, no, this is Hugh Laurie. There he is. Hugh, Hugh yeah, Laurie. He, and he, he got executed. <laughs> it's a lot of heavy hitters in this film. I remember seeing it, like I said in the previous video, Cinema 12, Dollar Theater. <laughs> and I remember seeing it when I was 12 years old, 1998. Um, and I enjoyed Leonardo DiCaprio because he is just coming off of Titanic fame. This was uh, the movie. That He's not coming off. This, is, this happened at the same time. This happened. Oh, yeah, same, same time, yeah. yeah. He, at this time, Leonardo DiCaprio had the number one movie in the world, Titanic, mm -hmm. and he had the number two movie in the world, uh, The Man in the Iron Mask. Like, this <laughs> was Leonardo DiCaprio, like, flexing some crazy strength here. This is why he <laughs> is the guy we know now, you know? Crazy. Yes, exactly. And basically what this film is, this is um, a 17th century France, and uh, this revolves around King Louis. He plays King Louis. And, King Louis uh, the Fourteenth. The Fourteenth, yes, and um, he is a tyrant of a king. And France is about to tear apart. They about to get to that <laughs> French Revolution early, baby. Because <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, about to cut a... off some heads <laughs> if they don't get some fresh tomatoes. Are they serious about that shit now? King Louis the Fourteenth, he doesn't care. He's like, oh, is the food rotting? Well, you better hurry up and give it to him. You know, like <laughs> chop chop. You know, what you doing? Everyone should be happy. This is the greatest country in the world, okay? What they what they yeah. gotta complain about? You know, very yeah. familiar stuff that's very relevant for today, but we're gonna move on. He don't give a dang about anybody but himself, his personal needs, and that's it. He has the musketeers there as his royal guards. And they're like, this is concerning. We need to find the exit door before we get to war. But yeah. turns out, there is an exit door. There is a guy locked away in a, in a castle somewhere who looks suspiciously like the current king. Four of King Louis' musketeers come up with a plot. Three and a half, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, come up three. with a plot. <laughs> come up with a plot to swap out uh, the man in the iron mask with King Louis the Fourteenth. What's interesting about this little this cast you're talking about is they are all they all have different accents. And yeah, no one makes <laughs> no one makes any attempt at changing their native accent at all. What do you propose to do? Replace the king. I cannot listen to this. It can't be done. It can. I know the way. I am with you. Lady DiCaprio has an American accent. It's got a slight British lilt. But more or less, it's an American accent. He doesn't try to hide it. Perhaps I haven't met a woman with a heart like my own until recently. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Irons does not try to hide his British accent. John Malkovich, straight up American. Like, no one tries to hide it. For me, I actually like that a lot because you we do? know these, yeah, we know they're speaking French, right? Like, so unless they're gonna start speaking French, there's nothing you can do for them to sound right. So just let them speak. I actually thought that was a, a Great choice. I thought you have an issue. Let it ride. I thought you have no problem. I don't. Okay. For me, immersion. I get immersed when the story's good. That's why ah. I found Will Smith's accent in okay. Emancipation so distracting. I kind of felt like when I was watching this film, it was more like a play. There are good things about that, and there are bad things, right? Where you do get more of a focus on characters, which is great, but you also get a lot of people in room talking. Right. Yes. <laughs> so yes, you get a lot of people sitting slow down this film. Yes, you get a lot of people sitting at tables, talking, and uh, that's kind of boring. And I would credit, I would fault that more to the director. I think instead of having a group of people sitting at a table 
hashing out their plan, they should have been doing like something else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> something to keep your eye engaged. And you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> the King's Guard is played by uh, Gabriel Byrne. Um, I felt like he, he had some type of mystery about him throughout the whole film that he was given. Like he knew something was going on, even though mm-hmm. he, he felt like, you know, he had to be true to his king and protect his king. I was like, something's going on with the dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and he's real, he's real icy towards the king's mom, and you're like, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> are you two about the same age? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The King's Guard is uh, Louis' uh, father, and also, therefore, uh, Philippe's father, too. No. No. If anyone sees, just death. The big theme of this film is fatherhood and your relationship yeah. between a father and their sons. And because one of the Musketeers, played by John Malkovich, he was a father to Raoul. And Raul was killed in war. He was sent off to war because King Louis wanted to bang Raul's fiance. So he <laughs> sent her off. He sent him off to war to get killed so he could have like a plaything, like a little play toy, you know? Yeah, he didn't love her. No, not at all. And so John Malkovich, devastated over the loss of his son, wants revenge. And little does he know that he's plotting revenge against his a fellow musketeer's son. He came in there ready to fight, didn't wasn't he? Yeah, he did. I my friend. <laughs> and all of a sudden he comes running in, he's like, huh, huh, huh. he's taking everyone <laughs> out single-handedly. They had to jump on this guy. Uh, yeah, so. He didn't even say a word. He just walked in there. <laughs> about to start fighting. I was like, oh, <laughs> he was on site. What? <laughs> yeah, because he was like, this dude took my son away from me. So yeah, right. I want to kill him. So they, they have to replace they have to replace him. And they find uh What's his name? Philippe. He is kind of like childlike, you know, because he, he he's never been outside his prison for the past what six years. Yeah, he's had his head locked in the mask and he and in that tower for yeah six years. Now this plot, I was kind of sub- confused about mm. the plot to switch out uh, King Louis the Fourteenth with the doppelganger. Uh, like why? Because the man in the iron mask, Philippe was the rightful heir. Why not just kill the king? So I was like, why not just kill him and then the brother will become king and that, and you know, that's that's that. Like, I, I understand the rigmarole with pretending uh, the king's brother was the king. Like, mm, man, just kill the king. And then just put it in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had him, he's right there. Just well, you like, see- <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The movie could be quick, you know what I'm saying? I could end it, I could end this plot. <laughs> An hour well, ago, you know? well, you see, with Philippe, he, he said, uh, "You got to give me a reason to 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 go along with this plan," because he, right. he he he's, he didn't feel like he need he needed to. He's like, "I could go over here and have a great life with this farm lady over here," <laughs> you right. know. He felt like he'd been locked in a cage for six years, and he's like, "Why would I want to switch out my iron cage for a gold one?" I've been in prison for six years. You freed me. But now you're asking me to enter another prison. The palace is hardly a prison. He felt like being being a king was the same as being in a cage. So it's like, for what? Why? But it turns out Philippe is much more caring about other people. Yes. Um, and he could sense how terrible uh, King Louis the Fourteenth was, and so he understood the importance of it. And the way that, the way the movie made you understand the importance of it was through the mother. The King the uh, Philippe loved his mom, and he wanted to be by her side. And he wanted he wanted a family, but little did he know he had one, and he was surrounded by them the whole time because his father was one of the musketeers that bailed him out. Mm-hmm. But he wanted to be surrounded by his family, so he's like to be with my mother to protect. Uh, my homeland, I will go through with your plot. Interesting thing about this film is this film is could be true. 
<laughs> I was looking it up. Oh, I, was, I was like, I was like, oh, is this based on a true story? <laughs> uh, and then I was like, there's no way. It's too totally crazy. forgot about that. I totally and, and, and history forgot. says, I don't know. Like <laughs> it's un, unclear whether this movie is true. For the most part, I will say it's a rumor that this uh, this actually happened, but there really was a man in an iron mask mm -hmm. whose whose identity was secret and he ate in private he had his face covered and he this was by the orders of the crown they want they, they didn't want anyone to see this man's face and a lot of rumors swirl that this could have been a brother to the real life king louis the 14th or maybe a father or someone related somehow related to uh the king so was this movie true was it not I don't know. His, his, his <laughs> very existence could threaten the throne. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was fascinating. There's actually some historical truth to this, that this this is a rumor that this could have actually happened, that the king might have been swapped out. Because by the end of the film, they were, they were saying that King Louis became one of the greatest rulers of all time. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> dignity. <laughs> The king known as Louis XIV brought his people food, prosperity, and peace. His people loved him, and France never had a problem again. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Uh, it doesn't have the action of the film that we reviewed earlier within a week. Right. <laughs> yeah. Zorro felt like a big explosion. That Jaguar explosion. You know, that was <laughs> that that was Zorro. This was yeah. this was more like someone playing on the piano. You know, much much more chill. Uh, yeah, yeah, they <laughs> they're dancing and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, so. that, 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 that describes this film. This film's a lot less in your face action, fun times. Even though the musketeers are here, there are sword fights. It does feel like none of this was interesting to the director. Mm. It's interesting. This, this this was the director's first film. This is his first directorial outing, and yeah. I thought he did okay. You know, I thought he did fine. Yeah. Uh, I would have liked again if our characters could do more than just like sit around and chit chat. But mm -hmm. I thought he did fine, you know? Uh, and I thought Leonardo DiCaprio, I'm usually kind of a, I'll be blunt, I'm a little bit of a Leonardo DiCaprio hater. I never really understood mm -hmm. why he gets as much hype as he does. But you know what? He was pretty freaking good in this movie. You know? There's, I was like, there's, hey. There's, I, there's a couple films that where you be like, damn, that was good. Django. He, the Departed, but also uh, The Reverend. The, it's oh, the Reverend. You know, I didn't like The Reverend. I thought he was really bad in The Reverend. That's my... That's my not so hot take. I think you eating him eating a liver does not. I don't think that's good acting. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm looking at you. I, yeah. yeah, I know. I, I thought the Reverend was <laughs> painfully boring. <laughs> it was. It was a. It was an actor's showcase. The thing I don't like about actors sometimes is when they sometimes actors get the idea that doing the most. <laughs> <laughs> means you're acting the most right you're doing really good and in the reverend he's like <laughs> this is making faces but it's it's the subtle things that are much more difficult to do that don't get a lot of attention called to them that I think are really good. Daniel Kaluuya like, does this a lot, where he yeah. plays these quiet characters, but you can tell there's a lot going on in his head, you know? Mm -hmm. So th roles like the like the Revenant, to me, I don't think are interesting. Like, like in this film, where he had to play a tyrant, but he also had to play someone who is gentle. So Yes, <laughs> and his tyrant version was casually tyrannical. He wasn't like, kill them all! No, he was just like, <laughs> he was just like, hey, uh, who made that call? Uh, just, uh, just, just kill them. Like, uh, yeah, just kill, kill that guy. It was just my guy. He'll be like, uh, yeah, what's for dinner? Man, I love spaghetti. Oh, you can kill that guy over there. Thank you. 
You're the new chief advisor. Execute him for distributing rotten food. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's cold, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, so those, so I feel like I feel like the subtlety in his performance was way more interesting and showed off a lot more, in my opinion, Leo's skill than something like the Reven- the Revenant. Leonardo DiCaprio did a great job of balancing two different characters in this, um, but I'm gonna give this film a um, B plus. B plus. I agree with your assessment that their actors are really good. I feel like Jeremy Irons is criminally underrated. Oh. He's got the coolest voice. Mm. He's got the coldest look. I feel like mm. he needs to be in more movies. Uh, I bash Zack Snyder all the time, but what interesting casting to make him Alfred. I thought that mm-hmm. was the best thing he did. And the movie does nothing with it. I'm like, yo, what the heck? But anyway, <laughs> Jeremy Irons kills the game. I thought uh, Leo does too. Uh, so I like your score, but you know, I never saw this movie growing up. This was my first time watching it. I have no attachment to this at all. So I went in watching this as a cold hearted adult and I was a little bored. So I am going to give this one a C plus. I think there are some really good stuff. Get some really good stuff going on here. I think the fact that this could actually be a true story or at least parts of the story could actually be true. So fascinating. I went down kind of a rabbit hole looking this stuff up. Um, but people sitting around to chatting um, can be a, can be a touch slow. Compared to how it looked in Zorro, the sword fights in this movie weren't that interesting. They looked kind of rinky-dink and quick, and the cameras were super, super close, and so you really couldn't see what was going on. Uh, I it's love more the like choreography. A yeah, you're right. You're right. It is a little more brawl like, and Zoro is a little more dance like. I totally, totally agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but I guess I preferred watching the Zoro sword fights. And in this one, I was like, all right, wrap it up, wrap it up. <laughs> you know, or, look, or, one, or, or, or break it up, break it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you recommend this film? That is a tough one. Um, I'm going to say yes. Only because to see a young young Leo uh, show some really interesting acting chops, you should. And because I think Jeremy Irons is criminally underrated, and you should probably watch more of his movies. I'll say yes. And I just like I like the, the Three Musketeers. So, sure. Right. I do recommend this film also for all of those reasons. Uh, and sometimes, hey man, I like plays. But I do like plays Same. in a playhouse. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you go to a play and there's nothing on stage. And so you use your mind. Your, your, your mind fills in some of the gaps. In a movie, you're not expected to fill in any gaps. So That's seeing two people. For you. Yeah, exactly. Seeing people, two people chit chat in a static room um, feels slow. But hey, most importantly, do you recommend this film? Have you seen The Man in the Iron Mask? Please get in the comments and let us know what you thought about this film and what you thought about our review. But that is our review of The Man in the Iron Mask. Hey, thank you for clicking on this video. We really do appreciate it. Our subscriber count has been going up, 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 and it's because of people like you. If you are new to the channel and you first time us you see in our face, please hit that subscribe button right down at the bottom. And we would greatly appreciate it. Come along for the ride, all right? And if you did like our review for this, please hit that thumbs up. Or you can hit the thumbs down, whichever you choose. It is your opinion. But just remember one thing, it is mostly wrong. See you in another video. Peace.